In this video, we will be looking at the fine structure of hydrogen. And so the fine structure comes from the relativistic correction uh, because, you know, the, the electron is moving at like a high velocity and has a high momentum and therefore it will uh, have to have relativistic corrections. And so we will be using perturbation theory to find those relativistic corrections. And so we have our Bohr Hamiltonian here. And so that just has the, uh, the potential here, which is just the electrostatic potential. So our Bohr energy is this right here which we found in a previous video. And if we are in the ground state, then it equals minus 13.6 electron volts. Uh, so in the Hamiltonian, the first term uh, up here is the kinetic energy, which kinetic energy is one half mv squared. But uh, since mv is equal to the momentum, we can just sort of square this m and divide by m, and then we get this p squared over 2m. Then we do the canonical substitution, so the momentum operator, which is ih bar, then the del operator here. And so our kinetic energy then becomes this t equals ih bar del operator squared over 2m, which gives us the h bar squared over 2m, or the minus h bar, because the I squared is minus one, then the squared del operator here. Uh, then the uh, relativistic kinetic energy is the difference between the energy of the rest mass in motion minus the rest mass. Uh, and so we have the mc squared with the Lorentz factor here minus mc squared. And so whatever uh, whatever energy we get because of this Lorentz factor will be our kinetic energy. Uh, but we need T in terms of the relativistic momentum set of velocity. And so the momentum is this MV uh, divided by this Lorentz factor here. So the relativistic energy is the E squared equals P squared C squared plus M squared C to the fourth, where if we don't have any momentum, this first term here goes to zero. And we just have E squared equals M squared C to the fourth. If you take the square root of that, it's E equals MC squared. Uh, but we are looking for when we have momentum here. And so substituting in the above, uh, we get the uh, the p squared c squared, uh, then the m squared c to the fourth, which gives us the m squared v squared c squared. And we have to divide that, remember, uh, by the uh, Lorentz factor. So that we're substituting in for the p squared, the m v up here, and since it's squared, it's m squared v squared. And so we have this Lorentz factor. Uh, but this m squared c to the fourth doesn't have the Lorentz, Lorentz factor, so we have to multiply that by the Lorentz factor in order to have that in the denominator for it. Uh, so when we do some algebraic manipulation here, we end up with this m squared c to the fourth divided by the Lorentz factor here. Uh, since the t has this minus mc squared factor, so when we put this back in for our kinetic energy. Uh, so we have the T plus MC squared, and then we square that. Uh, we foil that out and go through all of this, and we get that our T plus MC squared squared here is equal to this M squared C to the fourth uh, divided by this Lorentz factor. And so we have the P squared C squared plus M squared C to the fourth is equal to our T plus M C squared, uh, all of that squared. And so if we take the square root of that, then we have the square root of our P squared C squared plus M squared C to the fourth. Uh, and so then we are subtracting this MC squared from both sides. So we have T is equal to this under the radical minus the MC squared. Uh, we can then proceed to do the following. So we sort of 
factor out the m squared c to the fourth, uh, then we can take that out from under the square root by taking the square root of it, which is m c squared. Uh, but to factor that out, we have to divide the p squared c squared by the m squared c to the fourth. And so we end up with this p squared over m squared c to the fourth plus one under the radical here. And we have the minus one here because we factored out this mc squared here. And so we end up with this right here. And so we use the binomial expansion for the radical here. So which is this is one plus x, which we have that form under here, this one plus this, uh, this term right here, which is like our x uh, is equal to the 1 plus nx plus the n, n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared and so on, with our n being equal to half because we are taking the square root. And so when we go through all that here, we end up with our p squared over 2m, which is our first term. Remember, this is our kinetic energy term. And then this p to the fourth uh, over 8m cubed c squared is our first order correction right here. So this is our first order correction, what I have in this dark red right here. So our lowest order correction for the relativistic Hamiltonian is this right here. And so if we put that in, uh, in here into our bracket notation. Uh, we substitute that in here. We can pull this part out and we have the P to the fourth in the middle here. This stuff right here is all just a constant. Uh, and then we can split this P to the fourth up into a P squared times P squared, putting that in here. Uh, so in the unperturbed state, the Schrodinger equation is this. And so we have the P squared uh, acting on our our wave function here is equal to 2m e minus v. And so when we do that with this, uh, we have our p squared and p squared here. We're putting in our 2m e minus v into each one of these. And so those are multiplied by each other. And so we, uh, we can sort of factor out this 2m here and give our m or our 4m squared, and then we have this e minus v here, which we are then squaring. Uh, then this uh, psi inner product with psi is just equal to 1. And so we have this minus 1 over 2mc squared. Uh, when we cancel out the 4m squared in the, uh, in the 8m cubed, so two of the m's are canceled out, this 4 and 8 reduces to 1 half, so we have this uh, minus 1 over 2mc squared uh, times this e minus v squared here, which then if we FOIL that out, we get this here with e squared minus 2ev plus v squared. And so then we plug in our potential energy for hydrogen, which is this here, which is just the electrostatic potential here. And so we get this uh, so we plug it into this equation up here in the dark red, and so that gives us the minus 1 over 2 mc squared. Uh, we have our e sub n squared uh, minus 2 e n sub n. Then we have our potential here, then our potential is squared over here. Uh, and so then we can use the Bohr energy in for these e sub n's, which uh, was this, remember, and then for the uh, a's, on it, uh, we can actually put in this uh, Bohr radius. And the A's actually come from these uh, these expectation values for the 1 over R and the 1 over R squared. And so uh, if you want to see how you actually get these, I do have the, the, uh, the way to get that in the last two pages of my, uh, of my lecture notes here. And in the Griffith's textbook, doing this is actually one of the problems that he leaves for the reader. And so I guess if you're taking a QM class and you're using Griffith's and you want to know the answer to this, maybe you have it as homework, you can check out the lecture notes, which will be linked to in the description down below. Uh, but I'm not going to go through that uh, derivation here. And so we have this.
uh, after we put in those substitutions. Uh, then we are going to do a bunch of math, which uh, this is all sort of left as an exercise for the reader in Griffiths as well. I'm not going to name everything I do here. If you want to look at all of this in more detail, it will be in the lecture notes. And you know, I've tried to keep everything color-coded in a way that makes sense, uh, but I guess you can be the judge of that but ultimately we end up getting this right here so our first order correction of the energy is equal to this minus uh, energy squared uh, over 2 mc squared and then we have this 4n over the l plus a half and then this minus 3. so the energy for the non-relativistic energy uh, it has this correction here. So this is our correction for the relativistic energy. So the correction is on the order of E over MC squared uh, smaller than the non-relativistic energy. So it's about 2 times 10 to the negative 5. Uh, so we can put that here as our correction to the uh, to the non-relativistic energy here. And so we can call that the alpha squared here. And so that gives us this E equals uh, alpha squared times MC squared. That's our first order correction. Uh, so this alpha is actually the fine structure constant, uh, and it's uh, determined by this here, and it ends up being 1 over 137.036 dot dot dot. Uh, we then have the alpha squared equaling this fine structure constant squared, which is 5.33 times 10 to the negative 5, which is uh, fairly close to our 10 2 times 10 to the negative 5 uh, correction here. Uh, obviously, if we went to higher order corrections than just the first order, it would be keep becoming closer and closer. Uh, we then put in our values for this uh, correction here with n equals 1 and l equals 0, uh, where joules is equal to kilogram meters squared over seconds squared. Uh, we end up with a 6.65 times 10 to the negative 5, uh, which is only different from our fine structure constant here by about 25%. Uh, so like I said, adding the higher order corrections would reduce the error. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, down here, the derivation for the expectation values of the 1 over r and 1 over r squared. Uh, but I think this was everything I wanted to talk about in this video. In the next one, I will be discussing uh, the spin orbit coupling. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.